Dokken, Wolverine's long lost son, origin explored. Marvel says, irascible, cynical, brooding, gruff. We say Wolverine, right? Right, but also not quite, because unlike the universe of cinema so far, we would want to do justice to Akihiro. Movie buffs going all round-eyed, scrunching eyebrows. Unfamiliar name, eh? You probably can't be blamed. Let's ease it out by bringing into the picture Wolverine and Itsu, his Japanese lover. The latter's successful murder conspiracy by Hydra and the premature birth of the couple's baby Akihiro, aka Dokken as he was first mockingly called by people around him because his heritage was mixed. Dokken was born on page in the astral plane of Wolverine Origins number 4 from the work of writing genius Daniel Way and the artistic expertise of Steve Dillon. He has, in fact, an established troubled past that is perfect for an origin story. Dokken continues to intrigue, impose, and make his place in our minds, if not our hearts, as we connect to the larger universe of Marvel. Let's take a couple of steps back and look at the full picture of this long-lost son of Wolverine, Dokken. Before we go into our explanation we have a very small request if you like our content please support us by subscribing to our channel this is a small click for you but for us it means a lot thank you let's begin Origin. As tragic as it gets, Itsu was in her last stage of pregnancy with Dokken when she was killed by Winter Soldier on instructions to lure Wolverine back to the island nation of Madripoor. Romulus arrived on scene after the killing and cut through Itsu to reach the premature but alive Dokken. Dokken was then left to be taken care of by Akihira and Natsumi, a wealthy young and traditional Japanese couple who has since long been praying for a child. Dokken was named Akihiro by his adoptive parents and raised as their own. Akihiro's quick healing from the grievous hurt and pain caused to him is often attributed to his mutant healing factor, possibly inherited from his birth father. Having to live with the knowledge that your birth mother was murdered by someone seeking your birth father would inevitably have an impact upon your life. Akihiro was thus raised with a twisted perspective on his father, abandoning him after his mother's death. Nothing but hatred for those at fault grew profoundly in his heart, as he had no soft spot for anyone except his adoptive father to an extent. To make things worse, his lack of control over his manifesting pheromone powers caused others to mimic his moods, which one day led him to overhearing his stepmother admitting her lack of love for him. After several years of trying, she finally bore a child with the blood of Natsumi and her own. His hatred showed in his actions when this child was born, and what can only be called a reaction to his position in the house being threatened. Kihiro nonchalantly informed Natsumi that he had in fact ended the newborn's life. Akihiro reacted by asking Akihiro to never show his face to them again, and Natsumi tried to take his life with a rifle's bayonet. This ended with Akihiro being orphaned once again, as Dr. Dokken's mutant capabilities took over and the claws jutted out, slashing Natsumi's chest, Akihira couldn't fathom harming his adopted son and killing himself with the rifle instead. Essentially, most of Akihiro died too that day as Dokken was born to prevail. Before the sheer magnitude of what had happened could crush Dokken, Romulus appeared before him for the first time in the latter's conscious memory. Romulus projected that Dokken would eventually, someday, become who he wanted, Weapon X in its newest form. Dokken, up and about. After his adoptive parents lost, Dokken was sent to a boot camp by Romulus, who was eager to manipulate him into a man of many benefits. As it turns out, because why not? Not only was it the same camp headed and ruled by Frederick Hudson that Wolverine had been trained at more than 40 years ago, Dokken's trainer was also the same as his birth father's. The trainer went by the name of Silas Burr who also plays a pretty important role in his life. While in training, Dokken disappeared one day, only to reappear at Romulus bidding to kill everyone at the camp except Burr. Using his pheromonal powers to alter Burr's thoughts, Dokken was prepared to kill, but Romulus stopped him again, revealing that he had plans with Burr. Those plans were centered around, or rather, exactly were, the indestructible metal adminium being surgically administered to him. Years later, Burr went on to be known as Cyber, his first attack being an acting enforcer for a drug cartel who was sent to to Madripoor to oversee the distribution of a new hallucinogenic drug. Romulus surprisingly continued to emotionally manipulate Dokken, revealing years later that his father Wolverine was very much alive, but also the individual who actually killed Itsu and attempted to kill Dokken, who was then still in his mother's womb. Cunningly enough, he portrayed himself as the hero to gain Dokken's faith and trust and to be able to continue spinning the web of lies around him. Vengeance seems to be the least Dokken could seek, knowing things from the perspective he did. Bearing in the brunt of these rough times, Dokken decided to join a criminal organization that went by the name of the Red Right Hand, led by who Dokken knew as another man who sought revenge from Wolverine. As Dokken kept track of his father, he decided to keep establishing contact with all of his father's children from around the world and turning them against him, straight into the hands of the said villainous organization. The Red Right Hand grew with an objective of hurting Wolverine to the worst extent possible. He would have to kill his own children, who then went by the name of the Mongrels, even if they themselves 
themselves couldn't actually win against him. Honestly, that just reinstates the whole aspect of Dokken thriving on and making pain the entire purpose of his life, as is shown in the entire trajectory of stories that Dokken has been part of so far. When Dokken met Wolverine, the former had disguised himself as a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Not only did his long manifested rage showed in the way he acted upon confronting his imprisoned father, but also in the way he caused Wolverine the fatal, albeit temporary, injury as he slashed Wolverine's stomach reminiscing the tale of his mother's Itsu having been left many years ago to die the same way. He gave way to his next act of brutality in Berlin, leading a woman who he was seeing for a while to believe that he had forged an affair with another man to obtain his passport. Using his pheromonal powers to make her believe in the lies he told, he managed to eventually poison and kill her as well. The sadistic nature of this could easily be attributed to Dokken finding murder easy, even thrilling, to commit, as he purposefully wanted to tie up any loose ends that could point others to his crimes. Once again, the reader is made aware of how fueling rage can be and how it can normally drive a person to the borders of what might appear as insanity to most. Several stories and character arc developments later, we have Dokken become the cause of Cyber meeting his death, not before learning all of his secrets though. Wolverine was left behind to deal with the remains and Dokken had a little win for himself there. Obtaining a chunk of the ever-revered Muramasa blade that Wolverine possessed, Dokken went on to request the Tinkerer to fuse the metal fragments into his own claws. Story plots aside, Dokken's character is marked by several factors that truly set him apart. He has been portrayed as bisexual, a rarity in the comic universe as it is. Using his pheromones, Dokken managed to trick Lester, Bullseye, into kissing him and had an established relationship with a Hydra agent who went by the name of Kim. What truly sealed the deal, setting aside all speculations ever, was the power move from writer Marjorie Liu in 2016 when she revealed that her hints of a sexual tension between Dokken and Johnny Storm for Dokken, Dark Wolverine were quite intentionally written. Dokken's relationship with Aurora, however, was clarified as outside of the impact of Dokken's pheromones as that ability of his cannot actually create attraction and can only be used to manipulate an already existing mindset. What to expect, Dokken's tales at their finest. Simply because the X-Men world is littered with notoriously overlapping plots, so is the world of the Marvel Universe, but let's just give Dokken his due glory for now. Can't really start a journey except at the beginning, can we? Dokken showed up in Wolverine Origins number 10 as an infiltrator in arguably the coolest way ever. It was a shield base after all. He met his father for the first time, released all that pent up hatred by causing the latter's temporary unbeknownst to Dokken's death the same way Dokken believed he had killed Itsu. As much as you want to hate Dokken, you kind of get where his anger and distaste is coming from, and if not rationally and morally, his complicated relationship with his father Wolverine makes some sense on the emotional side of matters. At a turning point in the arc, Dokken and Wolverine seem to find something to agree on, as Logan involves Professor Xavier in his attempts to get his son back from years of brainwashing committed by Romulus. Upon realizing the truth, Dokken recognizes how he had become a weapon and convinces himself to help bring down Romulus. However, the lore of power played its part as Dokken sought to join Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers. It was right here, Marjorie Lou's Chef's Kiss. Writing showed up and gave Dokken his own solo series. The Prince truly exhibited Dokken's emotion-altering abilities for cunning purposes, scheming and creating his own place outside the veil of his father and Romulus. The emotional mess-up of Dokken's storyline is strangely beckoning. The number of people who would be able to relate to Dokken being torn between his father and another father-like figure is a heart-wrenching reality disguised as a comic book plot. I would go as far as to say that Dokken attempts pitting Logan and Romulus against each other were a coping mechanism so that he wouldn't have to make decisions. Wolverine did outsmart Dokken before he could kill Romulus out of hatred. It is painful to see realizations drawn upon Dokken that Romulus never really saw him as a son, only as a sacrificial pawn. Dokken and Laura's relationship was based on considerate affection and the focal point of collision. Dokken points out that Laura as X-23 lost his admiration because she refuses to use her powers to make a better life for herself, while Laura says Dokken does not care about people and hence restricts himself. The complexity unraveling between the two of them as they meet for the first time and then interact which leads to simultaneous character development is captivating, to say the least. Weapon X was about to be restarted but their efforts, despite emerging from their own battles, stopped the catastrophe that could have been. On the other hand, Wolverine's death exposes us to a different, new, respectful side of Dokken that you would not expect. The protectiveness towards Wolverine's legacy, the culmination of a funeral that he made sure to attend and say his goodbyes. All these things just unwrapped. Dokken's depths and emotions and a glimmer of hope of character development for the better. This is undoubtedly the most human side of Dokken we see. 
the power game. Why you need to look out for Dokken. Dokken's survival at birth itself is marked by one of his most significant powers, the mutant power of accelerated healing that he inherited from Wolverine. At 60 years of good, ripe age, the man doesn't look a day older than 25. The ability to recover from broken or otherwise harmed body parts in a jiffy and more extensively than a normal human being would give Dokken a good start, but overtaxing can make that harder for him. Items made of carbonadium are known to weaken him if they enter his body, but that risk is seen as minimal because the three bullets that the Tinkerer made for Wolverine are the only source of pure carbonadium. Essentially, it is only the lack of adminium in his skeleton that makes Dokken vulnerable to death by beheading. The bone claws are signature at this point, and Dokken has three in each forearm. Needless to say, they are sharp and can cut through Iron Man's armor kind of durable. The lack of adminium gives Dokken a significant advantage over his opponent since it makes his claws lighter and hence more flexible in the air. Add that to the electricity emitting glove that Reed Richards gave Dokken, and we have a stun gun gun in place too. Wolverine not only passed on the awe-inspiring ability of quick healing, but also superhumanly heightened senses to Dokken. The ability to see with clarity in light and in darkness, to hear sounds beyond human comprehensible pitches, and of course the sense of smell to catch up with a target is something Dokken swears by, and rightfully so. Especially with the sense of smell and his additional ability to manipulate through pheromones, he can suppress his own scent to a great degree. It can be easily determined that as fancy as it may sound, the pheromonal advantage creates impacts more physical in nature rather than psionic. His conscious ability to resist telepathy is ample evidence of the statement. Pheromones also enable Dokken to reach speeds and movements that seem to make him able to teleport to a safe area where an opponent may not have sight, a power honed by Romulus. Even characters such as Deadpool and Spider-Man who have heightened reflexes fall prey to Dokken's enhanced abilities. Not many can claim that they beat their all-powerful father in a physical fight, but Dokken here can truly brag. Trained by the top-notch figures of the universe, including the likes of Cyber as well as Romulus, Dokken emerges excellent at altercations that go hand to hand. He is clever and cunning and accurately assesses his surroundings, using his opponent's arsenal against them at times. Outsmarting people isn't a new concept to him and his intelligence is also cemented in the fact that he is fluent in German. Dokken, what lies ahead? Featuring in multiple stories with increasingly complex behavioral tendencies that make it pretty difficult to take sides per se, the X-Men mythos and its loyalists ought to recognize the OG great character traits exemplified. While Dokken exhibits his treatments of others quite like humans often do each other, quite likely a dig on the reader's reality where they tend to view other people as a source of getting work done more than anything else. His concerns and emotional depth are only brought forth when he truly believes in someone and considers them to be a loved one. For for instance, his sister Laura and some of his team and some of his teammates on X Factor. Be it the main Marvel Universe or the alternate MC2, Ultimate, Mutant X, Earth 295, etc. universes, Dokken has not been seen on the big screen or the small one for that matter, despite his irrefutable presence in stories. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has so far had a whispers disregard for its importance and one can only hope that it is attributed to him being preserved for something bigger. The layers to Dokken's character, the sheer brilliance that has gone into creating perhaps the most human of comic book characters, the potential of Dokken making it big is immense. The key to the long locked door of the LGBTQ plus community in superhero comics is Dokken, and another avenue could easily open up here if only Marvel decided to get exploratory with their films. With Avengers Endgame bringing the main team to a closure in terms of movies, new characters are definitely peeking from behind the curtains. The Captain Marvel series is widely anticipated as fans are looking forward to the further setup of the next phase in the Marvel world. Ever since there were rumors about a Dark Avengers script being developed back in 2018, something that died down quite quickly, not much has been heard that could raise hopes for seeing Dokken being represented on the big screen or small. However, the Marvel Universe continues to expand and we continue to believe that Dokken will find his truly deserving and long due place on Tinseltown superhero franchise side. So with that being said, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.